All right, I am back with another video of Dirty John, and then we will be caught up. So, different hair, different, uh, different background. Okay, so this is season one, episode seven, Chivalry. Now, what makes this video different is that all of the episodes that we have seen thus far, this episode fills in the blanks. So let's get to it. So back about two episodes ago, there's the scene where we find out that John comes from a family of grifters and his dad feels like he's special, like he's got a natural sense of doing all of this because his dad had him doing things like slip and fall schemes and walking in front of cars so that he could get some kind of money off of things that John would do. One thing that his dad told him was that if someone uh, double cross you, don't go after the person who betrayed you. You go after their family. So that's how the scene opens. And keep that in mind because we're going to see where that all plays out. Now, we're in California. Remember, he leaves Ohio. He's relocating to California. He gets his RV out of the compound. And now he is on the hunt. Remember, we didn't know who John was in the beginning. We just knew that he was a doctor. But now here it comes fill in the blanks. Now he's in the RV in, in California. He's getting high and he is on the hunt. He's looking for a mark because he's a grifter. And uh, he's doing a lot of drugs and he's going online looking for women to pray after. He's going on dates and um, he's wearing his scrubs while he's going on these dates, perpetrating a doctor. And uh, you know, he's, he's, it's, not, it's not working out. One, uh, one of the dates that he went on was a no-go because she has two older brothers who are cops, so he's like, absolutely not. And then uh, he went on a couple of other dates and then he uh, was trying to uh, he was trying to, you know, make things work out. It's not working out. And this is where he runs into Deborah. Now, Deborah, remember the first date. Okay. He goes on a couple of days before Deborah, but then now he meets Deborah. So if you got to go way back to the first episodes, he meets Deborah. They're having great chemistry. He goes back to, you know, he meets her at her house. And this is when he finds out that, you know, this woman has money. He meets Ronnie, the daughter. And first, uh, first time they think, he thinks that he's going to get it on with her. Deborah gets cold feet and asks him to leave. He has this huge temper tantrum. He has a temper tantrum. He tries to call the girl. He's like, I know it's late. And she's like, I've called every hospital. You are a liar. This woman did her homework. So she went, she, she really escaped a whole lot of, a whole lot of crap. And so he decides, okay, I, I got to regroup. So he's busy calling women, doing drugs in between that. And it's so funny for community service, he has to wash the cop cars. And while he's doing this, he's reciting his apology that he's going to give Deborah. Now, remember, um, she's thinking that this was a bad date and she's never going to see this guy again. But he calls and he says how much he's a jerk and that, you know, you know, I. You know, you do this online dating and, and, and you, you, this person looks like they're going to be so great, you know, on, you know, online and you transfer and you meet them. And they don't look the same. They don't, they, they're just a disappointment. And it was just, you know, something that I found someone who looked and did what they said online and in person and I messed up. He had been reciting all that while he's washing the cop cars for community service, which I thought was funny. Now... So um, he gets that. Two years prior, he they go back. They do a little flashback where he's trying to whack off his ex-wife and the cops and everybody else that got him in jail. But nothing ever really comes from that. So fast forward. You got to think about in the mental Rolodex. He's wearing his scrubs to that fancy party. Um, he's busy making her smoothies. He's doing all of this to groom her so that sh she will fall in love with him. 
Meanwhile, while he's doing and all his whining and dining and, and schmoozing, he's reading her eight emails. Um, he's taking her money. Remember, she had $80,000 in cash in her, in her house. He took that. Um, now he's driving the Maserati and meanwhile he's going to his AA meetings and he lets the AA people know that he's gotten married. Now, here's some of the dirty stuff that you didn't know. While he's doing all this, you know, because he has to do all these things with his uh, uh, PO. Oh my God. Okay. I was like, what? Okay. So there's a scene with the AA guy. The AA guy is, he's dirty too. So, you know, John is doing his thing and um, he's like, listen, you need to sign my card for court. And the guy is kind of mad because he finds out that John got married. We're like, I'm wondering, like, why is he pouting? Like, what is his problem? Well, honey, what ended up happening is that John is busy screwing the AA counselor. He's like, you know, I don't always do dudes, but, you know, pretty much telling the guy that he's got moves like Jagger and he's been filming him. Oh, meanwhile, he's blackmailing some women in between that. So all those charges that you saw in the, in the past, yeah, he's still on that thing. So he's like, yeah, you need to go and uh, leak out the lizard, meaning he needs to pee in the cup so that John will test clean because John's dirty. He's dirty. And he's got dirty pee. So the AA guy is busy uh, having sex with John, um, getting drugs. He's giving John money for the drugs. And he's being blackmailed. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. He's like, I normally don't do the guys. I was like, what? I guess. So um, John is at a hotel. He has a junkie friend. He tells the junkie friend, this is what I want you to do. Now, remember when they were at the beach house? Because he's like, I would really love to give you this. And she's like, well, I can do it. And she goes and she gives the um, the owners like $120,000 to rent the house, the beach house. Well, that strange woman that came in the house and met her in her, in her closet. And he, uh, you know, was trying to be the, the man, the protector. That was all orchestrated and planned. John got this junkie girl at a hotel, told her exactly where to go, told her exactly what to do, and oh, that creepy thing where she was gonna be talking, that was her little magic touch to it. While she's smoking on the crack pipe, they came up with this idea. Now, uh, remember the time where John was being Santa for Christmas? John is busy smoozing Deborah's mom who's a piece of work and that's how he gets the information finding out about Toby which is the nephew who's um who uh his his uh, mother was Deborah's sister and was killed by his dad who was also at the same church that they were going to so yeah he finagled mom to get that information so he could be an, an an asshole and tell Toby that you know you know you, you probably better off having your dad shoot your mother because you know you're worthless piece of crap then um where are we at where are we at uh okay so remember this whole scene about him kicking the habit because he wanted to be clean and they're sitting there with the drug counselor all planned that drug counselor john is sending him all sorts of drugs fitting the lollipops you know all this stuff that he can push yeah it was all planned but the the doctor did tell him that he was looking bad um okay now remember the scene where john is in the hospital and uh deborah's thinking this is my time that i can leave John knew that he was leaving, that she was leaving. He had, remember, he has the computer. He sat in the hospital room and watched her unload the house. So she comes back and gets him. They go into the hotel so he could kick the habit. All this time, he's looking at the computer. Um, <laughs> 
he he's just a garbage junkie. He's not like into any particular thing. Whatever he can get his his hands on, he's just a full blown addict of everything. So he's at the gym trying to work out. He can't lift nothing. He's weak. So he finds one of the guys at the gym that's pushing testosterone on it, which is also probably reason why he has all this rage. Um, he fi we find out that. Um, uh, Deborah has over $492,000 in her account. He's watched it, which is why he knew that she took $30,000 out. Now, she's found this attorney that is supposed to be a shark. And they're trying to come up with a strategy where um, she's like, I feel like my life is in danger. So he tells her, we're going to do an emergency domestic uh, violence restraining order. They go to court. And John, all of a sudden, is walking into the courthouse without an attorney with a cane. We all know he doesn't have it, but he's looking real bad. Now, don't forget, he used to go to law school. So he knows he can't go there unrepresented. So it's delayed. Um, he's busy calling her, calling her, calling her. She decides to meet him at a cafe, asking him. Him, what is it does he want does he want money now the attorney is pissed because he's like wait a minute you we just went to the court saying that you are in danger you're afraid of him but you met him and you asked him if he wants money now we can't use the domestic uh, violence restraining order so he's trying to think of something else um, oh he gets the car the Maserati he sets it on fire. Now, the, they're trying to figure out, you know, how can we use this as a threat? And he's like, he's explaining it away. He's very charismatic. Charismatic. He's like, listen, uh, she's a witch, and we're supposed to have an agreement when I can get the car. I saw the car at her place. I had a fob because we're still married and it's still our property. I took the car, I went to an AA meeting. No, I wasn't at the church. I had to park outside around the corner from the church. When I came out, it was gone. He torched that car on fire. Now, we're not sure why he did it, but because she's like, what was the point of it? Because he loved that car. Mm, maybe because he's just a son of a bitch, right? Um, she never gets the post now. And I think that's going to be a problem. And like I said, she's baffled because she doesn't know if it's a sign, it's a warning, or what. Now, um, this is where it ends. I know I'm going real fast, but this episode was just really filling in the holes of all the things we have seen. And really getting into the deviousness that is of John. Now, remember, he doesn't like it when people walk away from him. Remember when his sister kind of like challenged him? He was going to make her life miserable. He's on the path now that since you're not going to be with me, I'm going to make your life miserable. And the, see, the scene, um, the episode ends where he's in the RV and he's got all of these tools now it goes back and forth the part where he's they're sitting at the precinct because the car is torched and she's talking to the attorney wondering what is he up to why would he torch the car the car he loved driving that car we've got great memories of that car and that really pisses me off that she even in the midst of all this she still has this fawning, lovingly, nostalgic ideal of who John is. And he's a psychopath. Anyway, he's sitting in the RV. He's got all of these tools of knives and screwdrivers and all this. Like it's his kit. He ends up taking all of these various things that we know that he's going to probably use on someone. And he leaves the RV. Where he's going, we don't know because it's at night, and that's how it ends. You're in trouble, girl. I haven't said that in a while, right? You're in trouble, girl. You're in danger, girl. So that's how the episode ends. We are all caught up to the new episode. I think it's the finale. I don't know. But 
these last two episodes have been really good. So let me know in the comments what you think. Take care of yourself and each other, and I will see you for the next episode of Dirty John. Bye.